For more on the cost of raising children, Ellie Kay, a financial expert, joins us and is the co-author of Lean Body Fat Wallet. She joins us live from the city of Los Angeles. Welcome to Biz Asia America. Uh, I want to ask you, so we were just talking about this, this 23% increase in $2,012 over the past 50 years. What's the reason behind that? Well, I think that one of the reasons is because in 2008 in America, of course, we had that bubble when it comes to housing. Housing values dropped dramatically. And now with housing back on the rise again, it's getting more and more expensive to pay for housing for those children. And when you look at that figure that they're talking about in terms of what it costs to raise a child, 30% of that comes from housing. So that's a really big factor involved. And of course, there are rising costs in childcare and in different levels of education as well. What do people do now when they want to have kids? I mean, you know, when my parents had, had us and there wasn't this thinking of how much it would cost, but these days, all the stuff on the internet and stuff that we're talking about right now, is there a bit of overkill in terms of planning or is it something that they must do now if you're considering to have kids? Well, I think that it's important to plan, but there is such a thing as over planning. And, and if you wait to, for the per perfect time to have a child, then that time may never come. So I do think that budgets are important, uh, that you have to modify sometimes your expectations for what you want to do for your child. If you have multiple children, you may have to put them in one or two type of extracurricular classes or lessons. They may not be able to do absolutely everything that you would like to do for them. So a big part of raising children is modifying those expectations and planning by having a budget and trying to do what you can to give that child the best possible upbringing so they can be prepared to launch out on their own. Well, the, the best possible upbringing leads me to my next question. A lot of friends of ours here send their kids to different schools when they're two or three years old and they learn 12 different languages and they go to 12 different classes and the kids are two and that's going to continue for the foreseeable future for them. And it costs parents a lot of money to send those kids there. And a huge portion of their budget goes towards that. At what point is it, is it too much? Well, I think there is something called the hurried child syndrome. And that is when a child has too much, too many things being thrown at them at one time. It is so important for children to be able to have time for creative play. And if they're in 12 classes learning 12 languages, then that really is a little bit too much. I'm a mother of seven, and so we understand what it was like to raise all of our children, and yet we always prioritized that creative play so that they weren't, didn't have that hurried child syndrome and they could still learn a lot of things. They all got scholarships, all went to college with bachelor's, if not a master's degree. Some are still in college. But it's important to give your child the best possible upbringing, but don't think that they have to have all these extracurricular things for that to make that happen. I, um, I'm smiling, but the, in a, one of the reports that I saw is that 30% of kids under 30 still live with their parents and of course this report goes to only 18 years of old and so in this decade we see more and more kids whether it's the economy or their personal choice they're living at home so the parents ultimately have to pay more of that cost it's going to be much more than two hundred and fifty thousand dollars do parents now think about this or do they still think at 18 the child goes away and you don't have to worry about that anymore I do think that parents are thinking about college. Now, in these numbers that you quoted today, that does not include college expenses. And I think what's happening, especially in America, is that so many parents, especially those that are making $105,000 or more a year, they spend a lot more on their kids while they're under 18, and then they don't always have the money to pay for the kind of college that they want to go to. And then the students end up with student loan debt, and guess what? They're living at home until they're 30 because of all of those reasons. So I think we need to step back a little bit, readjust what we're doing with our children in America, how much money we're spending on them, and t still try to save enough money to be able to send them to college and give them the skills that they need so that they aren't uh, being forced to live with us unless they want to do that by choice. Ellie Kay, great speaking with you. Joining us live from Los Angeles, co-author of Lean Body Fat Wallet. Thank you. Thanks. Great being with you today, Phil.